tonight we're going to talk about what I think is a very important subject. We're going to talk about stress and worry and fear because right now the whole world is filled with it. I'll be right back. Hello, I'm Jackie Cecil, and I really am pleased you came back or never left. I want to talk to you about the amount of fear and worry and stress that's happening in the world right now. It has everyone, every friend I have, every um, work associate, there's all of us are carrying an extra load of things we shouldn't be carrying around. We're so wrapped up in it. Some people are wondering when, when the children will get to go to school without mask on. Others are worried when they can find the right mate. Others are worried that their job doesn't pay enough. And, and everybody has just this like wound up feeling of sadness and fear. What I'd like to do is tell you a little story about how I got so wound up in that same predicament. I have a wonderful friend. Her name is Kindred. And Kindred and I were talking and she knew that I had started a new project. So I was telling her about this project. And as I'm talking about it, um, you know, I'm doing a little whining. Now, I wanted that project. I wanted it really badly but it you know took some extra skills and some work and you know so I'm whining to her so a couple of weeks later something really pleasant nice happened for me I got another gig I, I got an additional thing to do and now suddenly I'm whining again Kindred and I are talking and I'm whining about Oh gosh, now I've got two plates spinning at the same time. And oh gosh, I don't have to get all this done. And, and I had worked myself up into quite the little tither. And she just got quieter and quieter. And then Kindred very carefully said to me, Girl, you're acting like you don't even have a God. And I was, I was devastated. And why would I be devastated? Because she was right. I was acting ridiculous. And, and I began to think, well, well, how did I get in this predicament? And, you know, years ago, there was this book and it said, what would Jesus do? And so in every situation, you were supposed to stop and think, well, how would Jesus react to this situation? So, so I thought, well, let me look into the, let me look into the Bible. Oh no, not that. Let's get the Bible out. So I wanted to, I wanted to just see what the Bible said about fear and worry and anxiety. And, and the interesting thing is they describe worry and anxiety as being, it's typically about something that has an uncertain ending which is certainly true for us, isn't it? We're all not certain when COVID will ever end. We're not certain that we won't have other problems with food in the grocery shop stores. And we got all these worries on our heart. And, and many of us are, are, are just wondering when we'll get paid again. So as I was thinking about what would Jesus do, I got the scriptures out and you know how I am. I like the little bunny trails. I like to, I like to see what the Old Testament says and the New Testament says, because I think that gives me a nice balance. So I went into the Old Testament and I'm, I'm using Google and I'm Googling every scripture I can think of about sadness or worry or fear. And in the Old Testament, in Joshua 1, 9, it says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and be of courage. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. 
for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Now, did you hear that first couple of words? Have I not commanded you? Wow, that's, that's pretty upfront, isn't it? So, so then I, I look at another um, Old Testament verse. I'm looking these up, trying to find something that's of encouragement. And this one in Isaiah 41, 13 says, for I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and say to you, do not fear. Well, that's pretty plain. God is holding our hand like we are a child, helping us cross the street, telling us not to be afraid. I was like, oh, that's pretty plain. So then I go to the New Testament and I look up some, you know, some verses to see if how they talk to me. Uh, do they talk to me as strict as, as God was talking in the Old Testament? So I found Philippians 4, 6 through 7. And that Bible verse says, do not worry about anything, but instead pray about everything. Just tell God what you need and then thank him for all he has done. You will experience God's peace when, when you do these things. So I'm like, okay, okay, okay. I, I, I'm catching on, God. And then in Matthew 6, 25 through 34, it says, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own. So, of course, he's telling us what people have been telling us for years. Take it one day at a time. Of course, the Lord Jesus is saying the same thing the Father God is. So then I look in, uh, I'm looking in books that uh, mature men have written pastors, uh, theologians, to see what they have to say. <laughs> and one of them actually said, since Jesus commands us not to worry, that makes worry a sin. Whenever we worry, we are disobeying a direct command from Christ our King. When I read that, I thought I was talking to Kindred again. And, you know, it was like, whoa, that is, that's as straight, straight as it gets. And so I thought, okay, what does worry do to us? Worry is frankly just foolish, gets us nowhere. It's fruitful. And worry makes us become faithless. We actually lay down our faith and pick up worry. That is not a very good trade. What the heck are we doing? Unbelief is a terrible sin against our great and good God. Whatever is not faith is sin. I mean, when I'm reading the scriptures, I realized that I was in sin. And I don't think of me as a, a person in sin. I think of a person that helps others out and talks to them about Jesus and, and brings them good joy and good tidings. I don't think of myself as one who is in sin. But Kindred was right. The Bible talks about it in both the Old and the New Testament, what I am supposed to do during times of stress. So this I have learned. One thing works wonderfully if we go to the Father God and repent. It's not really fun at the first of it. It's, you know, you have to go and say, God, I realized I'm in sin. And now I'm asking you to forgive me. And I don't know when I took the rabbit trail that direction. I don't know how I did that all on my own. But I did. And, and I've been sounding... I've been sounding unfaithful. I've been sounding like I don't have faith in you. I've been sounding like I don't even trust you. And I do. Father God, I know that you built me. You formed me. That's the better word, isn't it? You formed me in the throne room. You breathed the breath of life into me. 
you wrote a book about me, as you write about everyone, you have filled me with joy. And I'm running around whining and saying, oh, I can't do this. I can't do that. And Father God, I apologize. And I repent. And from this moment on, I will be more positive. I will speak only positive things because I want you to be proud of me. And because I want to be, I want to be good at my job. I want to help others find you and know that you love them and care about them. And nobody's going to listen to me when I'm whining and not being upfront about what a good God we serve. So I had that nice long conversation with God and now it's a few weeks later and I'm thinking, okay, so I'm not quite so raw anymore and I'm not, I'm not quite feeling like I'm going to fall off a table because, or, <laughs> because I was so out of step with God. And I think that might be the best way to put it. I was out of step. The rest of God's army was marching along together and I'm running along whining. But God forgave me. I felt his love. I prayed. I cried. I asked for forgiveness. And I knew he'd forgiven me. Because you know what God does? When you come to the Father God and say, I've realized I've been in sin. And you, you repent and you, you decide to grow up. And you decide to be better in some area of your life. Because of the grace of God. Because of his mercy, he forgives us as far as the east is from the west. They never meet again. As long as we're doing exactly what we told the Father God we were going to do, we never have to repent for that again. We don't have to walk in worry or fear that he's going to turn around and smite us. That's not going to happen. God forgives us. When we, as his children, come back and say we're sorry and we start over. I'd like for you to think this through. If there's an area in your life where you need a do-over, I'd like for you to do it. Just ask God about it, do it, and start over. Down on the bottom right hand of this screen, there's a couple of things I'd like you to do for me. I would like you to um, click like, of course. I, I, if you haven't already, I'd like for you to subscribe. And then, of course, the big deal is, for me, it's a big deal. If you know someone who is just surrounded by fear and worry and, and is having a hard time, I'd like for you to use that word share. I'd like for you to share this video with them. Just send it to them and say, here's a get well card. And here I am as transparent as I can be. But I feel better. I'm group up. I grouped up. I, I grew up and I feel better. And I want your friends and family to feel better. So I'd like you to just send it to one person. If everybody who watches this video sends that to one person, think how many good friends are going to feel better. Think how many family members are going to feel better. I appreciate it so much. Let me say a little prayer. Father God, I thank you. I thank you that you are the God of the universe. You are the great God, Jehovah. You created mankind. Father, I thank you that you saw this, you saw me wallowing in sin and you kept me. And Father, I thank you that everyone who watches this video will glean something from it. And Father, if it's anything that's wrong that I've said wrong, I thank you that it'll just be like dust and disappear and they'll never remember it. But if it's anything from you, Father, every word I said that's from you, I thank you, Father, that it will stick to them, encourage them, and help them know you better. And Father, I thank you that you are going to bless this audience. Bless them, 
physically, bless them spiritually, bless them financially, bless them with creativity. Bless them, bless them, bless them. I thank you for it, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you for being here with me. Have a great evening. I know when you go to bed tonight, you'll feel better because you've been with God. Talk to you soon. Bye.